We're live. We're live. Wonderful. Uh, a new year, but not a new us. Uh, we're here once again, icebreakers. We're back. And we're going to start this year with a bit of a banger because the annual global game jams are upon us. Reverb. Okay. Uh, I don't know if the audience can hear this, but our producer is talking to me saying there's some reverb. And I don't know if that's true or not. And we're just checking that. So uh, a new year, but I, with some audio issues once again. I'm not hearing any reverb, at least. So we're good? Seems OK. We got uh, two people saying it's OK. So I'm going to go on. If it's not good, I think we'll hear. But yes, as I was saying, the annual Global Game Gems are upon us. So uh, we and you, our darlings, we're going to be talking about Game Gems. My name is Hedley. As always, uh, RGDA Finland representative. And uh, yeah, I'm with my lovely co-host, as always, Sylvia from Norway. Hello, Sylvia. I'm coming from Nonita, the Norwegian network for video game companies. And uh, normally we have our third host from Sweden, Kim Limna, but he couldn't make it today, unfortunately. So once again, Finland and Norway will uh, carry the torch <laughs> of the Nordics. Uh, but this time, something surprising. We have a Danish person uh, with us uh, for the first time. So it's going to be it's going to be good. It's almost like we don't even need Kim. <laughs> wow. Uh, but yes. <laughs> Sorry, did you want to say? No, so. I was just going to say now we actually say, can say that we are the Nordics. We are representing the Nordics now. That is true. We're missing Little. Iceland, I suppose, but like, you know. Yeah. yeah, we'll get there one day. Anyway, one day. Our, yeah, you're not just here for our pretty faces. You're for these lovely faces. Uh, I'm going to throw the uh, baton to Bobby, uh, if you want to introduce yourself first. Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Bobby. I'm from Sweden, Malmö. Uh, I am a game designer, so I run my own studio called Transcendence Media. We make story-based games, but I also work for Game Habitat, which is a community organization for our game developers. So we do a lot of different stuff, but uh, Game Jams is one of the things we do. So we arrange two uh, uh, Game Jams called Moxie Jam and Vision Novel Jam. And then we also have the, host the global Game Jam at our uh, house called DevHub. It's a lot so of that. Yes. I like it. I like it. All right. I'm going to go with on my screen how it looks on my screen. So next we have uh, Daniel from Denmark. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Daniel. Uh, Danny. Uh, I used to be a 3D artist working on a VR game called Richie's Plank Experience. There's the plank behind me. Uh, then I joined Unity as an art producer. And around that time, I also became the organizer and then eventually the lead organizer of the Nordic Game Jam happening in Denmark uh, once a year. And uh, maybe we'll dive into that a bit more. Uh, Set for a quick intro. All right. Uh, I'm going to continue on my screen. Next is Teemo from uh, Finland. Yay. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Teemo. Uh, I'm here in Finland, Helsinki. And uh, I work at Fingersoft, uh, just joined this, this month. And uh, also, like more related to game jams, uh, we have this, this organization in Finland called Finnish Game Jam, which hosts uh, the uh, global game jam sites. It's kind of an umbrella for global game jam sites. And we also have a couple of other, other jams during the year. Uh, but I'm the president of that organization. So even if, if game de <laughs> game development is not like busy enough then i also have this this kind of secondary role there and uh i am pretty sure there's going to be a lot of more i will open up a lot more but i also like in in development i did hyper casual games previously so i i'm also very very acquainted with with uh making games fast so yeah true it's true also congrats on the new job then it's thank you very much <laughs> We um, are here. I'm here at the office, so this is the Fingersoft Helsinki office. And I'm competing myself, like I said to the lo our lovely uh, guests and, and, and my co host, that I actually, my office was one kilometer less than that from there. I could have been there. We could have had like a lovely little finish moment connecting there. But like, you know, us Finns, we don't want to be too near each other. So we have to do this. 
Yeah, um, I was I was planning <laughs> I was planning to kind of invite you here because I like, I know you live pretty near, but uh, yeah, it's the Finnish Finnish nest that was. <laughs> in school or anyway, uh, yeah. we do have Ovo also Norway here. I'm gonna do my best to do the Norwegian R. So Trygve, maybe that's close enough. I don't. That's know. That's pretty good. Yeah, right. well done. Thank you. Yeah. So my name is uh, Trygve Bjelvog. And I am um, I'm many things, but I'm also uh, not just running the jam in Oslo, but I'm also a regional, regional organizer for all of Scandinavia. So as you guys were telling me about the, the sites, I would um, check them out because I, I basically talked to Sweden, Denmark and Norway and Fadoina as well. So you might actually get the Fadoina person on, on the cast next time. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. running... Running global game jam, and um, I am also a associate professor at a school uh, university here in Oslo called Kristiania, and I teach uh, game design. So everything from level design to game design to marketing to whatever, everything that needs to be done. Um, and I also go around pitching and promoting and try to do as much good stuff as I can. Um, from a more kind of a game design related uh, aspect. I used to have a company. We've done some games. It's called Working Mill. Did a lot of mobile games, but I also worked in a AAA company uh, here in Oslo doing animation. So I'm an animator in, in my heart, basically. My, my favorite thing, like every time we have these guests, uh, people introduce them. It's like, it's, no one's ever just like one thing. It's like, Oh, so you're multifaceted people, so it's like you do whatever you want. You're just creative, beautiful people. That's exactly. exactly. <laughs> really, really nice to have you all all here, and really cool to have Denmark here for the first time. Uh, cool to have you, Danny. Uh, so, just in case someone who's watching doesn't really know the, like game jam, what, what what is that? What does what doesn't even make sense? Uh, really short kind of. Con I, I'm going to say a couple sentences, and then please, uh, everybody, uh, fill in what you think is uh necessary so the idea of a game jam is that there's a short period of time most common as far as i know is a weekend uh you get a theme uh and you gotta build a game around that and then you find a team unless you had one to be ready with and essentially in in three days uh from friday to uh evening to sunday afternoon you have to come up with the game concept the mechanics possibly the story make the graphics make the game in whatever system you want it doesn't matter uh, and then just make it. That means you have to like, you can't get st stuck on anything. You just got to keep going. You will probably be cutting out stuff. And, and then at, whatever you do, you're still going to be in Sunday afternoon rushing to push the game out. And uh, it's a really good <laughs> condensed version of making a game because that's kind of what it is, but in a bigger scale. Uh, that's, yeah, that's that's my experience. That's my how I've seen it and, and how I experienced it myself. Uh, but yeah, please, please add to that if there, if you think there is something to add. That's the most common thing, uh, I think, that uh, there are also the online game, game jams uh, mm -hmm. that usually okay. go on for a little longer and where many people do games by themselves as well. So Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a good addition, especially, I think, because of the, the pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it changed these as well because they are they used to be very physical and now they're more hybrid or some even just completely online. Which is which is cool, uh, but but yeah, now we're also back that we can have some physical ones, which is which is kind of kind of nice. Uh, anything else? Anyone else wants to add about uh, what they are? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And like the barrier, or the bar is very low. So if you have something at the end of the weekend that. If if there's something on the screen that moves when you push a button, or if, even if you don't press, push, like push a button, then that's already a like a pretty good victory. So like that's that's at least what we've been trying to embrace. I mean, yeah, that's uh, I I concur with that because it's 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 basically my sales pitch, and it's uh, join Global Game Jam. You got forty eight hours to do something, right? It doesn't need to be working. It doesn't need to look pretty. It won't. Uh, <laughs> So, so just get in there, do some stuff, move, move things around, try new skill sets, all that kind of jazz. And the worst case scenario, this is the absolute worst case scenario, you make a game. Mm. Right? Everything else is just a bonus. If you meet awesome people, if you form a company, 
if you take that game idea and make it into a certain simulator or Celeste or whatever, which all comes from game jams, um, that's the best kind of pitch I can give. And people kind of go like, ooh, but uh, I don't program. I don't do art. You don't have to. You can do literally anything you want because there'll be other people there. And it's a good kind of collective tribe of people who just want to be creative and share. Um, so if you don't know art, you talk to artists. There are a bunch of them there. And they're more than happy to work because they love drawing. They love doing pixel art. They love doing modeling and sculpting and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, and it doesn't need to be digital. It could be physical. It could be whatever you want to. So I think it's it's the, the core essence of a game jam is that there's a really tight short frame, uh, uh, time frame. Uh, and you have short on time, you're short on resources. And especially with the global game jam, you're not, a, you know, you're not allowed to come with a team. You have to find the people on the ground and kind of go around. So you're uh, you're pushed into going around talking to people, and you'll you'll just drop that guard immediately because you'll see that everybody's in the same boat, and you all just want to have a good time. So yeah, well, I think that leads perfectly into our next question, which is why should people join game jams? Can I can I actually all add that. some? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all that, and then if I can add to what you said, which kind of really goes with what Sylvia, like Sylvia mm -hmm. mentioned, that the next next question is because uh, you mentioned the skill sets. Uh, the first time I went to Game Jam, I I'd never heard of Unity, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we use Unity." I'm like, "What's Unity?" And they're like, oh, "Here," and then they gave me. <laughs> They'll tutorial. usually just like show you, right? Yeah. And you yeah. mentor them, and you're yeah. just, oh, that's, like, that's how you do stuff. Like, All right, cool. Exactly. You can learn so much there. And then, they, you yeah. know, they give me tutorials. And when I ask questions, they're like, oh, yeah, you do this. And then, you, and then, and then you know, I, I learned so much during that one weekend. It was, it was bonkers. Uh, so, and it's yeah. usually stuff that you, you don't have, uh, you didn't know you needed, right? You don't need, um, many people go to, or don't go to game jams, things like, oh, it takes forever to make games. It's like you hear about this development hell and you're, you're stuck in, uh, you know, you're, you're polishing something for five years, you know. Uh, but it's not that. You don't have five years. You've got 48 hours. The theme is something very abstract, uh, usually built around many interpretations. Uh, and it's a global event, especially with Global Game Jam. But any jam is its own kind of energy. And I think once you tap into that energy, you become super, super um, hungry for just being around these people. And yeah. uh, we've done our job right. If if everybody's super tired at, at the end of the weekend, and they're you know they're they're they've been bleeding and sweating and and <laughs> and just super super tired about the project, and the, the really they ask me you. like, yeah, they really just <laughs> at the end of the thing, right before we say goodbye, you know, everybody goes to sleep. They kind of say, when's the next time? You know, it's that Fight Club okay. kind of vibe. It's like this is something I didn't know I needed in my life. So yeah, game jams and fight clubs are. There's an energy there. Uh, need to write a thesis about that, but yeah. Not the connection I would have made, but yeah. Sure. <laughs> but it's about being in a different space than you usually are, yeah. and I think that's that's going uh, towards you both your questions, like why we sh why you should join. Uh, it doesn't like we have so many so many people. Like uh, for the the game jam that we run in Oslo, we're about a hundred people, and they're all from. You know, they could be from, from AAA industry, they could be hobbyists, they could be not even close to games. Uh, and they all come out the same, in a way. They, they've been kind of formed together and forged in the fire. So they come out with, with new skill sets and just new appreciation about something they didn't know about. And if you're, you know, if you're in a kind of 9-to-4 job, or even if you're a game developer, which, which you probably aren't in the 9-to-5 uh, jobs uh, type, time set, uh, you break some patterns. And I think that's the best advice I could give for everybody who's a bit more experienced going into game jams. Don't do what you know, try something new. So if you're, if you're a programmer, um, make the art, you know, try that. Because you'll be with artists, you'll, you'll sit right next to musicians, you'll sit right next to other skill sets that just makes you a better communicator and someone who, who appreciates their skill set. And if you can see other people's for you know other people's work for what they do, uh, you you become a better asset basically at your team uh, when you go back to work. And I can I can like continue from there. Like <clears throat> you get to do some things <clears throat> that you probably normally wouldn't get to do uh, in terms of uh, because the the time frame is so short. 
you usually get or you get to experience because the the target is to get something done something like shown on the screen uh, you get to do the kind of do the uh, entire cycle of from from planning to release so you get to, like a even if, if, if it is a just a tiny bit of <clears throat> experience of of these things but you actually know you know like what you need to cut and like where you need to cut and when you need to you kind of need to get a little bit of feeling on like what's what there is still to do because it's the first times will be that you will be still doing <laughs> still doing features on saturday night uh or sunday morning and yeah and then after a couple of jams you will probably not be doing that necessarily or you uh, know you you'll totally see um you'll totally see people who are experienced jammers contra uh people who have just like just joined you know a friend told me to come or something and you'll see that the people who are experienced uh they never go for the the you know they they kind of target in on something and they usually they say last year I did that skill set so this year I'm going to try that and they've completely changed their attitude and work ethics around what happened during the last weekend they did it um so i got, I got a friend of mine who was joining on the the oslo game jam site and he basically is a, he's a musician never done games uh super into it but never done it and what he does is that he sets up his own kind of dogmatic rules he kind of sets his um like last game jam he set his own rule that's like oh, i'm only going to do acoustic uh, instruments for this like whatever they ask me if it's sci-fi, if it's uh, uh, Minecraft kind of clothes, it's like whatever, it doesn't matter. It's like just acoustic. And this year he has bought like a very specialized synth that's very limited. And he's like, he's, he's constructing his own kind of frames and, mm. uh, and uh, rule set, which is almost like a diversifier in its own, which I can talk more about. But yeah, you, you'll see that they hone in on something that's very hard to do, but they also create um, different ways out of that whole so they're super creative in a very short time and um yeah the people who are not experienced with game gems they kind of go in yeah i'll make uh I'll, well, let's try to make uncharted you know 48 hours mm -hmm. and uh it's a box that moves <laughs> and everybody goes like that's amazing like come on <laughs> we, we all know that's super hard to do wow yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I will also like add if you if you if you don't have enough friends go to a game jam and <laughs> do sound or music and you will have Everyone will love you because there's never enough of those people. Never, ever enough. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, Denmark, Sweden, any, any, any things you want to add? Yeah, we try to like uh, we try to make game jams for people who haven't made games at all, uh, and uh, sometimes uh, still come people who who do. But uh, the main target group is people who who will like maybe wouldn't go to a global game jam because they they feel like they don't really have a, what they need yet. So we do like some uh, mix up between a game jam and, and the course because we give them some introductions to, to the tools. Uh, and then I think they come because they want to see if games is something that they would like to do. And uh, then I think a game jam is perfect because uh, you really get to see all of the uh, what's in it, like what should be in a game, uh, even if you can't make that in, in that short amount of time, you, you will still see what, what a game is. And that's, I think that's one of the reasons to join to just because for especially young people, it can be really like, how can you make a game? It can be really hard to uh, get into it from the beginning. That's, that's actually really cool. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Sorry, yeah, Danny, go on. So, and uh, yeah, we we are actually doing a bit more of that as well this year. Normally, we lead with uh, Fridays and all Fridays and Thursdays would have talks. And uh, this year, we said, okay, uh, let's see if we can bring some of the new uh, generation in. So we have a whole new section of student tickets, and we're gonna have specific um, categories where we're hoping to help people get. Uh, uh, into game development because I think there's a lot of curious people. There's a new thought that uh, I acquired over the last year. Someone said there isn't a kid that played a cool game and he's insane. I want to make games, and I think that's a place where game jams really help because even if you don't have experience, you can go somewhere and you can see the professionals, you can see the veterans, you can see the hobbies, and you can work alongside with them. Even if you are um, not the greatest contributor, you're set for success because you know what it looks like. So over the next years that you go to the jam, your experience changes. 
definitely sure. we also just encourage people to <clears throat> like if you even if you just go like make coffee in the team that's already like a yeah, perfect yeah, role yeah. <laughs> we also need all of those people just to to kind of boost and help and just be evangelist and and hype people uh you don't need to do anything you just need to be there and be be interested you know that's all you need i would i would add like something that's not often mentioned but like if you can get a producer kind of person into your team that will make a lot of things easier it's something that's often kind of overlooked but they will make a lot of things smoother uh instead of having just like four chaotic wonderful and creative people, but absolutely chaotic. And then it's just like, what? What are we gonna? Oh, wait, what? No. And then you have what? Uh, but then if someone to bring some organization into the chaos, usually a good thing. Usually. Yeah, that's uh, what I've seen. I think top center. Some people discussed a bit earlier. Uh, your experience over doing multiple jump changes, and more experienced people tend to focus on like something really small. So they would go and say, oh, you know, we're gonna do this with this twist connected to the theme. And they actually can execute towards the end. I think maybe it's that production experience that uh, comes into play. But uh, it wasn't at the Nordic Game Jam, but it was at the Sofia Game Jam. I saw the most incredible jam I think I've ever seen. It was two programmers who decided to do a multiplayer game. And they just kind of nodded at one another. It's like, yeah, we do it like this. We do it like this. And then the next day, they just have everything up and running. No bugs. <laughs> What's the no challenge idea. than that? That seems really boring. <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand. Like every for those who don't know, normally when you go to a game jam, everyone's like, "Oh, I have this idea for a multiplayer game." You just go no, like no, no networking, absolutely nothing, zero because it's no so multiplayer, game. no, no yeah. art brought in from the outside. It's like everything is just dirt and uh, tape. <laughs> just make it work, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my legend story. Yeah, that sounded cool. Actually, I, I want to see. Uh, I just want to uh, go back a little bit to what Timo said about. Um, um, you mentioned something about uh, the people who go there and their kind of feeling and, and how they're... Uh, yeah, it's like, it just started the thought in me and it's... Um, just want to say that it's kind of interesting as well that uh, the reason why game jams exist, I think, is that because you've finished something and you have such a short deadline and you have a limited resource and all that. But look at what you made, you know? You have a weekend, you made something. And then you leave it. You usually never go back to that thing. And I think um, as someone who teaches a lot of 20-year-olds, uh, they, they tend to get really stuck on like making it like it's the polish face or the pre-production face. That's kind of most their time, right? It's five minutes in between there where they kind of do the production. Uh, but the pre-production they can spend years on and the, the afterwards they can spend the rest of their life on. But I think like 48 hours, there's no polish. You, you can't do that. Um, and also you just finish something. So it's like, it's that old saying, like, finish, not perfect. And you, you did it, you, you're done. And that kind of gives you some sort of elevation in, in your creative sense of self, where you feel like, Hey, I did something, the product is out and you can start to reflect. And I think that's the, the reflection phase is something we're lacking. Um, not all of us, of course, but I mean, just some people. When they start with game development, they, they just want to get into it. It's like, oh, I'm in the engine. This must be good, right? But it's like, no, it's you're 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 already too much into it. So I think just finish something, think about it, uh, let your mind kind of reset a bit, and then take that skill set you learned or just that feeling onto something else. The next project is really important. I I I I have to say, like, I like how optimistically you said. You know, you teach these twenty year olds. As when you know they don't know what to finish and they get stuck to polish, as if it was just a twenty. I know plenty of thirty-year-olds. Oh yeah, no, everyone does this. Yeah, yeah. I was being super nice. Yeah, I do it. I do it myself. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I want to kind of, uh, if it's okay, I'd like to move. Um, yeah. to go on, on a little bit about what general game jam information. And since we have so many here that are doing different types of game jams, uh, I'd like you to talk a little bit about um, what kind of game jams that you run, a little bit about your game jam and what kind of, or who runs the game jams? Cause it's not just you, there are lots of different people uh, that do that. And if you could tell us a little bit about that. Um, Bobby, would you like to start? Sure. Um, the game jams that we do right now at the Game Habitat is uh, one is like uh, uh, not uh, online. It's like in a, a game school called the Game Assembly. So, um, and that one is uh, just for uh, women and uh, trans uh, people. 
So uh, we wanted to do a separatist uh, game jam because like I I've been to a Valkyria jam in 2018. I think it was uh, something special to to be only with non-male people to see what can come out of that. And we wanted to do something similar to that. But it's a very small game jam and it's around 20 participants. And uh, we do it at, at the game school so they don't, they don't have to bring anything. They just come there and we fix the food and everything. And then we have like an introduction to Unity. So um, uh, we've only done it once. Uh, this is going to be uh, the second time now in March when we do it again. Cool. And uh, yeah, so uh, and it went really well last uh, time. They made point and click uh, uh, games just to like have something that's not too too big to get started in. So that's the one of them. And then it's the visual novel jam, and that is online. And that is a bit of the same. We we uh, do it in a weekend, and we start with like an introduction to Rempy and the uh, visual novel making tool which is open source. Uh, so uh, I show them a bit of how it works and then they get started. And at that game jam, actually most of the people work alone. So that's uh, kind of different, but it's pretty common with the visual novels that people create by themselves. So then you get a completely different, of course, uh, setup when people work alone. So yeah, and then we host a global game jam, but I'm not very involved in that because it's another like organization that does that. And that is much more like the regular game jam. And it's also very nice. Yeah. But it's exciting I... to hear about these different types of game jams for yeah. sure. Do, do you mind if I ask really quickly, because that sounds very interesting, the the, the first one you were talking about, like which is for, mm. for women and trans people. And, and, and uh, is, there, uh, is there something there that you, you've noticed uh, that's, that's very different or, or something that you would think that would be good? good ugh, can't talk today would be good to carry out to other game jams or anything like or anything interesting like points that came out or is it just like just good vibes and good games it's good vibes and good games but i think maybe a little oops a little, i got the echo but it's a little uh, maybe a little quieter uh, like uh, people are uh, <laughs> like very into working and not doing so much other things. I think if I compare it to other game jams I've been to, but I also think the setup that we're at the school and it's uh, uh, they don't go to that school. So it's not like their space. We have a classroom uh, and like that we start with the course, uh, intro course, maybe makes it a little more like a, a, a not a school feeling, but still, it doesn't really uh, get the, the same uh, like party vibe that can be at some other game dance. So it's a little different, but not very. Interesting. Thank you. That's really, really, really cool. Uh, who wants to continue? Otherwise, sure. I'm going to throw Danny under the bus because he's the next on the screen. <laughs> Good to go. I'll, I'll take the mic. So um, again, I'm the chair of the Nordic Game Jam um, happening in Denmark, despite the name, I guess. Uh, it's been running since 2006 as a completely voluntary organization. And there's been many changes in terms of the organizer count. Um, right now, we are 14 people. Uh, we have, I think, only one person or two people who are students. Everyone else works in different companies. Almost everyone is working at a different company. I think we have like two people from the same company. So. Uh, it is a really nice uh, like representation of the different studios here in, uh, in Copenhagen. Um, the jam this year is 13th to the 16th of April, uh, happening at Volvo University in Copenhagen. Um, let's see, what we focus on is trying to make the event co cozy. Uh, I guess uh, it's this word is thrown around way too much, but we still throw it around because it's important to us. Is the the Hugi vibes? We try to make it a safe space. We try to make it fun. We try to um, make sure people have a, a good time, and we encourage creativity. Something that we did last year, and we're going to be doing this year again. Uh, we have decided to remove competition uh, out of the our jam. So last year we had a, a, a flower theme uh, garden. Uh, so you, there will be different flower beds with different flowers, and then each of them would have a prompt. So there would be a word or a QR code for a sound, and then you'll be able to go and like pick different flowers with your group. 
and then that's the game that you're making. So we kind of mm-hmm. spin things around, and instead of saying around the theme, you form your group. We're saying form your group. Discuss what type of game you want to make, whether it's going to be more mechanically driven, emotion driven, or something else. Um, and yes, we start with uh, talks on uh, Thursdays and Fridays uh, to kind of help uh, set people with uh, new creative ideas or maybe learn some new skills. And then uh, we kick off the we kick off the jam on the, on the Friday evening and. Sunday sales submissions and uh, what we did last year was we had a floor where everyone can set up their computers so everyone can play one another games and it was a um, instead of uh, here's the winners and here's the sore losers um, it was a celebration of the effort that everyone put together in the, the few days so that's what we try to emphasize I think this year we'll be building on top of that I think that's a good intro of the chat yeah, I think that's really interesting to hear because very often, or not very often, in game jams and um, a lot of game jams, there is like a there is that competition uh, aspect that it, and then there's the prizes that you can win. So that's fascinating to take that away. There's a lot less pressure that way. We do the same. We don't have any competition in the game jams. Yeah, <clears throat> same for us. That we <clears throat> we actually try to keep it keep it as as like little uh, competitive as as possible. And I guess I can I can go next uh, here. We also like one of our events is is we do actually have like Finnish Game Jam awards that we we kind of award games uh, every year. But we how we do that is that we have a like board of judges who uh, play through the games that we have received gameplay videos or watch through their gameplay videos that we've received during the year from our jams and then like whatever is interesting like we kind of on based on feeling like is it innovative or is there something that you kind of like in this game uh be it gameplay story visuals or anything and then we kind of just make up the award name for the the games that we kind of select there so it's actually like you you cannot optimize to win this award you can just it's up to the to the judges <clears throat> but um yeah so finish game jam i guess we, i can go we have a pretty wide lineup i suppose uh so we do the uh, global game jam so finnish game jam in finland uh or finnish game jam which is global game jam in finland uh so we this year we have like 24 sites if i can read this so 24 sites in in finland uh somewhere around 800 people joining i think this year again but uh in addition to that we also uh, have a couple of other jams so for example we have um Pocket Jam is coming in Pocket Gamer Connects uh, in the Pocket Gamer Connects Helsinki event. Then we have at Assembly uh, Helsinki, we have the uh, or the Summer Assembly, which is a LAN party. We have a game jam there, Assembly Game Jam. Um, then we have uh, in the summer, we also have uh, Pride Jam. So uh, hearing about the Valkyrie Game Jam is kind of, it's also in a little bit perhaps similar theme. So it's, it's uh, in the Pride uh, week. And it's kind of also, I wouldn't say targeted, but it's it's very looking looking very much like a uh, belonging to the to the event as well. So they were we're kind of hoping to have that as a that like an event that would encourage people from from sexual or uh, gender minorities to join as well. But we also, of course, all other events like Pride Jam. It, it's we we shouldn't be in a situation where Pride Jam is the only one. That you can uh, participate. Every every jam that we have should be a safe space for everyone to to join. Like enough, so so that's kind of the baseline. But that's the more of the, the pride theme there. And then we have the Finnish Game Jam Awards, which is kind of now a little bit evolved to just posting a video during the Finnish Game Jam, the the actual event. Uh, but we used to have awards scholars as, as well uh, in a previous years but the well the pandemic kind of threw us threw us off the the rails there and then we also have this uh jam jam so we in the in the summer we have this kind of festival of of jams it it started as a like organizer meeting in the summer to prepare for the global game jam but then it kind of expanded into this festival and now uh for the past well last year we had it uh first time after the pandemic and we had a seven cottages eight cottages which have a sauna and uh and a hot tub and we had grilling and we had uh, we had a seminar day where we had a couple of speeches uh there and then 
we had a kind of workshop day where like we had a couple of pre-made workshops but the the point is that we actually the participants them themselves can and um, kind of arrange a workshop in one of the cottages so there's there's been all kinds of like arranging different kinds of game jams to and uh, volunteering in game jams to doing actual like jams or the the food jam and then there's also been like a jam jam so the, the music jam as well and then there's been pancakes and and like uh, we go one one workshop is disc golf as well because there's a nice disc golf <laughs> the track there. So all these kind of cool things and it's it's really kind of exciting exciting weekend definitely. Uh, any excuse to have a jam, just let's go, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> did did yeah, someone but... say jam? I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Jam, jam, yeah. jam. Yeah, that's yeah. a good jam. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We we had. Jam, I, I, jam, I kind of jam, want to make jam. a jam that's just called get, let's get out of this jam. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if that's if pretty quickly, much the... Yeah. Sorry, Jim, if I can quickly add, it, I, so something that's been interesting that's kind of, kind of organically happened is the IGDA Finland and Finnish Game Jam have come together. So every February we have this big uh, meetup, which is, depending on the year, uh, three to 500 people. Uh, and, and all the jammers who want get to go on the stage and they have five minutes to show their game and explain what they learned, what they thought was really cool and what they had to cut out. And then we have like this massive like little demo area where people can go and play the games. And that has uh, been very, very popular. Uh, it was a little bit on the break because of the pandemic. And, and this is the first time we're going to do it after the pandemic uh, next, next month. So looking forward to that. And, and I think that's, that's really cool. Yep. That's it. Sounds really cool. I think we should do something like that in Sweden as well. Mm. Yeah. Yep. The more people you get to hear about them and try the games, oh, yes. So good. So good. Yep. Uh, Norway, you want to you wanna share some secrets? Well, so many secrets. No, um, I, we only do Global Game Jam, uh, mm. as far as I know. We've done more localized versions, and I've run a couple of them, but it's more... Because we're a game dev school, uh, it's, it comes very natural to do a time box kind of solution jam. So they get a prototype or something out of it that they can work with. But it's it mostly it's for skill building and team building. Um, so the global one is, is the one that we do every year. And it's uh, it started with um, before I took over the course. So I, was, I used to be course leader for the game design BA. Uh, before I took over, some of the students who were there, they ran it for a couple of years, and it was mostly for them. But they got really good industry connections, and uh, we just saw the kind of need for doing that. And uh, maybe not as a school, but just locally, just have a place where everybody can come and jam, basically. So we started doing that, and I took over because I've done it in Cardiff uh, in the UK a couple of years ago. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this is my seventh time doing it in Norway, I think, and tenth time overall running a kind of global game jam one. But we've been doing, you know, there's been smaller stuff uh, as well. There was one, Trigve, that was uh, Splash, Splash Jam. Splash Jam, yes. That was really uh, cool. Yeah. That one I didn't participate in because I was in the UK at the point. So, so things are definitely happening, but... I, uh, we, we need to kind of, you know, Nuneva is, is really good at, at, at trying to get everyone together and kind of make one page that everybody can see what kind of things are going on collaboratively because it's um, everybody wants to do it, but nobody wants to host it. And then, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, people, it's, uh, I don't have time, I got kids, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, so uh, I think the global one is such an easy sell because it's global, it's happening everywhere. And if you're not in Oslo, you go to Bergen. And if you're not even in Norway, you go to Sweden or Denmark or Finland. Um, so I think uh, that's a strong brand. Um, but most of the people who come to the Global Game Jam in Oslo, at least, come f because it's local. Uh, it's something that happens locally, and it's something that's safe. It's nice. It's uh, where they meet their old friends again, but also make new friends. Um, and can kind of... I'm almost getting sick of the word jam now. We'll jam together. <laughs> that's kind of it you ruined jam for me <laughs> no but i mean uh, yeah it's, it's all it's all about getting together and just being a cohesive unit that's that's it that's 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 cool that's cool i i just want to really quickly say that 
uh, like bring it up that this is all a kind of this is all volunteer work. This is uh, like like you know, tip my hat yeah. to you. I've done a fair amount of volunteer work. Like it it does take a tremendous amount of work and a tremendous amount of people to run all these sites and all these things. And it's it's really really cool to have so many passionate people all around the Nordics and and you know globally as well doing this. And 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 you know, I I we all know we we all are like volunteers. So like it's. We know how much it is, so I honestly much kudos to all four of you. you definitely, that. like ours, ours as well. Like we, I mentioned a lot of gems, and the, all of them have some sort of main organizer, <clears throat> always from from Finnish Game Jam, uh, the organization. Uh, so, for example, Global Game Jam does have like we also have one Sylvia for us to <laughs> organizing our our game jams, uh, who who's doing a really great job in in managing all the sites but also like then the other organizers are separate for for the assembly or pocket jam or or so on and yeah you know we have a lot of a big community as well yeah. sorry you sorry. broke up their hell what did you sorry. say uh how many vol do you know how many volunteers finnish game jam has uh finnish game jam has is mostly currently kind of run with uh by the board and deputy, so uh, we are somewhere around uh, twenty-five to thirty people who like board deputies, and then we also have, uh, especially for graphics, we have external people uh, doing. But yeah, at the moment, somewhere around thirty people, I would say, uh, in total for all the events during the year. Uh, so and we're yeah, that... organized for eight hundred people. You can imagine it takes some work. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I, I know that Danny mentioned this earlier, but I want to ask a question about your favorite game jam memory. Yeah, let's it go. could be that Danny has some others as well, not just the online multiplayer games, but do you have a favorite, personal favorite game jam memory? If you want to start off, Bobby. Uh, oh, that's hard because <laughs> there are so many, but uh, uh, I think uh, List uh, has been my favorite game jam. It was a uh, Danish uh, Game Jam about like uh, love and intimacy and relationships in games, and that's one of my favorite topics. So I really love that Game Jam, but it's not a specific memory. It's more like the whole experience of it. I really mm. love it. Yeah. And Danny, do you have any others? I'm wrapping my brain to think of some, but it's it's really hard to rank them. Um, I think. I'll go with a weird one because I think I think it's, a, it's now I'm I'm reflecting I'm realizing it's actually something that's quite important. So uh, many different jams that make a game and we put a lot of work with people and they would just turn into a shitty game and like we do the presentations and no one really cared about it but nevertheless it was really cool. I it, even if you're not the winner you get to carry this um, experience and uh, yeah learn from it and I think the Making games that no one cares about. It's like a very valuable experience that you better get at the jam for something you've put just two days working on than getting that experience after working on a game for a couple of years. So mm. I, I think that's that might be something really special that I appreciate all now. Well that's that's yeah. a unique answer. <laughs> Timu? Yeah, it's it's a little bit like a question when you ask someone what's their favorite movie, and suddenly you have not seen any movies ever. But but uh, uh, so that there there are a lot of good experiences. Uh, trying to not sure if there's favorite, but really cool experience. One that I can remember was in Edu Game Jam in two thousand, probably seventeen. Uh, it was just a personal personal highlight was that uh, we made a game. Uh, so that was a jam where. We had uh, game developers and then there were teachers there uh, as well in the teams and we made some sort of uh, Swedish vocabulary uh, game game there uh, but the thing that was for me which I like just um, as one does yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but it was mentioned earlier that you kind of take something some kind of objective for yourself uh, for the jam and I took that I want to make a multiplayer game like local multiplayer game where one player plays with a controller and the other plays with a keyboard so I, I got to make that that and it, it became a, a environmental uh, Swedish vocab like Swedish environmental vocabulary teaching game uh, so that was yeah <laughs> that, was, that was pretty cool
and like that. Good, good answer. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good, man. I was starting to think about a lot. Yeah, as I said, uh, there's there's a lot of moments, and I think the whole yeah, the, I've been to a bunch of them, um, a lot of game dance, but I think the the reason I got into it was because uh, me and a friend in Cardiff, we we were hanging around a lot with the games industry but i teach uh, i was teaching at a university over there as well so i don't i don't get to create as much as i wanted to uh and nobody was kind of running the global game jam over there uh, i was it was dormant a little while so this was back in 2016 maybe 15 uh, a couple of years ago so me and my friend we we said uh why don't we run it uh and we did and we kind of set it up and, and got together some of the local industry but just people we knew uh, who wanted to maybe break up their lives a little bit and try something different. Uh, we had no idea what it would turn out to be, and I think we only were 12 or 15 people uh, in the first run. And it was super fun. Like, we watched movies together. It was just You were just kind of hanging with a big collective of, of really talented, nice people to hang around. So it gave me an immense feeling of uh, pride and kind of uh, just... just these people are not my friends for life. But at the end of the game jam, what really kind of, you know, just solidified the whole thing to me was that my friend, um, he, he's a 3D modeler and he does like hard, hard surface sculpting and stuff for oil industry uh, in, over in Cardiff. Um, and he basically said like my whole life, I kind of stopped me on my way out when we were kind of shutting down and turning off the lights and all this stuff. And he said, my whole life I wanted to make a game, but I've never had the time. But during, in, in like less than 48 hours, I have made several, right? And that, I am getting goosebumps, uh, I'm crying on the inside, but it's, it, it just really turned it around because this guy, he was my friend and I didn't know he had this passion. Um, and he didn't know it either. He just wanted to make something, but he never kind of, he didn't have a mouth to speak with, you know, that kind of thing. So, so just during his 48 hours, he had worked on several games. He had already stuff that he can put on his portfolio. Uh, he made the same friends I did. Um, we then became like a bigger cohesive unit that, that, that kind of tied Cardiff and, and Swansea and that kind of stuff together by doing more jams and, and just being more in that kind of local space of uh, events and just you know come to the pub and play games and that kind of stuff. So it really just kind of solidified the whole experience, like why jams are uh, maybe the more most important thing that I can give, like in such a small small segment. Yeah, that's inspiring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. That's, uh, that's I'm kind of... inspiring myself now. It's like I'm. <laughs> oh my god, I want to do this jam so bad. Come on. <laughs> also, cool. It's cool to hear, like uh, you know, from outside of the Nordics as well, like a bit of. Uh, different different take. Uh, I will quickly add to what Dan was talking about, like doing the multiplayer. So you can talking about learning stuff. Something I never thought about. And one one of our game jams, we we're trying to do a game where you're a teenager sitting in the bus next to a grandma, and they're talking to you, and it's you know Finnish people, so it's very awkward. And and the thing is that you had to uh, play two player games, and both of you had to press a, more and more buttons that would come on the screen, so your hands would get and entangled and the idea is like you to put two strangers to get their hands entangled like a really like nice idea but then we realized that windows doesn't support uh having more than like was it 10 keys at once or eight keys at once pressed and then how like we didn't test it before at, on sunday we're like oh shit this doesn't work so you learn so much and also learn from my mistake don't trust windows is what i'm saying <laughs> uh anyway uh i think we we we're we're running pretty close to about an hour because we were like mm -hmm. five minutes late so we're 50 minutes in uh we have a couple more questions uh but but uh, i think we could go to like a uh big one which is does your like do you know of any success stories in your country that came from game jams that would be really cool to hear about those i saw two people nodding who wants to go first <laughs> bobby you are you seem eager you sure, at least I can go. I I'm not. Uh, I don't know for sure, but I heard that both, like uh, Goat Simulator and uh, also some Landfall games, comes from uh, from game jams and like they're huge successes. So I think that's pretty cool. 
definitely. Yeah. And I, I think um, this is stuff talked enough about like that. It is also a like kind of a springboard for a lot of like people like teams to to bring out their game. Yeah, and I think also that uh, then when people have uh, gotten used to uh, be at game jams, they also know how much uh, creativity there is. Yeah. So uh, that uh, they keep using it in their companies to also like uh, uh, make new games. That's also like the method of using game jams. Also, in... a great point. Like, I know a lot of companies do like internal game jams. Uh, we actually, when we were talking about this thing with Sylvia and Kim and Viv who is our producer, our lovely producer, who I actually forgot to mention in the beginning. <laughs> and he's but yeah, it's Viv, who runs everything. Uh, thank you. We love you, Viv. Uh, we're talking about that. What's the name? Double Fine? Double Fine? Double Fine, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Nisha uh, Fortnite. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they, they do a lot of internal games, uh, game jams, and then that ends up as a game. And, and, and I think it's not also, it's not very much talked about. And I think maybe within the dev uh, uh, culture maybe a little bit, but it could be a more broad uh, topic, and that's a really good point. Thank you for bringing that out, Bobby. Yep. I also just showed in that uh, we we look a lot um, at that kind of model for our internal jams and the things that we do for prototyping in game dev. But uh, the Amnesia Fortnite is very special because it's uh, we've bought the documentaries. Uh, you know, it's it's a full no clip documentary team. That kind of follows them for two weeks while they do the jam at Double Fine, and what we discover is that yeah, well, you know the games are fun, and uh, the ideas they pitch are insane, and Tim Schafer is amazing. So it's like it's all all this kind of stuff that's happening around there. But what they do is that they actively try to sway people to switch uh, roles. So if you're working on the animation team and you pitch an idea, you become the lead of that team. And I think what that is super smart to take on to every company all, all over the place is that you break the kind of pattern and you break the, the rules, but you also break the roles that you're set in. It's like if you're a programmer, you don't have to be a programmer forever. You can you can start looking into different areas. You can go into more specialized stuff. Uh, and I think that's, what, that's the biggest takeaway from that. Uh, for doing an internal game jam. And I know some of the other companies in Norway do it as well. Mm -hmm. And Splash Jam is part of it. And uh, you have all this like smaller, more intimate kind of uh, jams or, or just hurdles that the team can kind of collaborate with. And you'll, you'll see people kind of rise out of the thing uh, a little bit different, you know, a little bit more experience or maybe just a team building experience. Yep, and I actually did uh, at my pre previous company, so at Lightyear, uh, I we well, I was co-organizing a, a jam as well, an internal game jam, and that was that was a really good experience. <clears throat> it was a little bit smaller company, but it was like we got people switching teams a little bit, doing what they do, but still doing with other people uh, mostly, and that was kind of a refreshing experience, and. Um, yeah, and at Fingersoft we also have we have these things called demo days, uh, but we were also thinking of maybe moving a little bit more towards uh, kind of a game jam style of of doing this kind of prototyping. And for the fins regarding the games games that uh, come from jams, uh, ours is the Baba is you basically, the yeah, most. That back to the actual answer. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? It's a brilliant puzzle game. I really recommend it. It's also very cute. Uh, but uh, I think, yeah. So did I miss? Did Norway mention it? Did you have some games? Um, no, I don't think we have like specific games, but I think the teams are inspired to do anything okay. or do things afterwards. But one, uh, I mentioned my music, uh, music friend who um, did all the acoustic stuff for last year's Game Jam. He then went with a team um, out of that jam, they kind of formed a little team and they released a game called Cosmo Clash, mm -hmm. uh, which is out now. And uh, that's that's a really fun, small, super simple multiplayer, like hectic uh, type of game. But it's, it's like he did did a lot of the music and helped out with the score and stuff for that. So I think out of, out of some sort of collaborative cauldron we're all in, uh, people meet up later on, and then, then it's like, "Oh, you're the guy who did the music. We need you." <laughs> you know, <laughs> or you're that artist that did all that amazing pixel art for my game. Amazing. Let's join my new team. You know, join my new company. 
So I don't think we had like a specific title that went on for it. Uh, mm-hmm. We're not as uh, big as Sweden and, and Denmark are. So it's more, yeah, it's more kind of uh, internalized, I would say. Yeah, yeah, fair, fair. And I, I do, fair, to be fair, I do know a bunch of people who got a job because of Game Jam they uh, mm-hmm. went to. Absolutely, yeah. Formed that team and formed that company. So yeah, that's, that's in, yeah, very, very valid. Uh, Denmark? I uh, actually am not too familiar with uh, how many games made it from the Game Jam to a uh, final product. Uh, I think I've heard of uh, a couple of years ago, maybe I remember wrong, there was uh, a board game uh, made in China. I never actually found it uh, anywhere, but um, I know. Uh, they said, I, I think I was somewhere and someone was presenting it. They said, it was, of course, they made it in China as well. Um, and I was just checking our wiki to see, and it says that in 2017, uh, is this? The winner of the jam was Baba Is You uh, by Hempuli, but I, I'm not sure. It seems like it, it seems like uh, I'm not sure what the stats. That. That's that's ours. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know why it's there. Uh, that's what I've heard. Um, it was so not a finished game jam. Claim it. Oh yeah, so it was probably a Nordic game jam, but yeah. by a finished team. No. <laughs> I had no idea. In, in, in 2017, I was in Australia, so I'm like completely detached from this. But yep. uh, it might be worth updating our wiki then. Yeah. We, yeah, we have actually a question from the uh, from somebody watching, uh, who's asking about um, how to uh, if there's any ideas on how to scale down to uh, for kids age 12 to 16. Do they, do you have any tips about scaling down a, a game jam for them? Well, I, I can just shoot in that uh, Global Game Jam has something called Global Game Jam Next, which is actually targeted to kids. Um, I'm not familiar with how it's run, but uh, it's the same kind of concept where you, where you get attached to maybe a school or some place that's, that's the kind of safe space, uh, or either you do it uh, on your own at home with your, your parents. And we have, we've also... we have yeah, done some, yeah, we have done some uh, game jams for uh, children. Uh, with the uh, there's something in Sweden called Kulturskolan, the cultural school. Um, they have like uh, uh, a game dev course, but they also do uh, game dev, like game jams for children. And then uh, we use Scratch, uh, and they like it's like a regular game jam, but uh, you can't be too many. So around 12, uh, 12 people is a good uh, good number. And then it was online, so because it was during the pandemic, but it worked pretty well. We did everything on Discord, uh, and uh, you you didn't have to be that many facilitators when it's so few. So we were two, and they they had their groups and they asked questions as soon as they needed help, and uh, yeah, we helped out. So not too many, but uh, it works uh, very well with children as well. Yeah, and we had a college game jam in Finland, and we had actually a couple of, another, like I think two jams that were uh, mostly for fifteen years old, like that that age group. Uh, but I believe that the things that you need to then take into account is that um, have some sort of workshop maybe in the in the jam, so ma- make it more kind of structured. So you have some sort of easy tool that they can build, build the stuff, and like they can discover what is behind or between the the idea and the what you can make on the screen. So they get a little bit of kind of uh, some sort of experience on that. So I think that's that. It just needs to be a more bit more structured and probably might need a little bit like like mentioned here earlier as well that you need a little bit be ready to coach them a little bit more than in normal jams. It's also, also yeah, a very I can kind of just shoot in sorry. that. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. You go ahead. I I take it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I was just uh, again about the global um, game gun next. It's for twelve to fifteen, and I was just checking it out. And it, it's a mentor and kids kind of program. So you're attached to a mentor, uh, maybe on Discord that can kind of help you go through a program. But it, it is, as you say, a very like linear kind of way of of making games. So. You get you get a couple of things that you can put together, but how you put together is up to you. But the mentor will help you with how you actually proceed to that. Sorry, Bobby, you go in. Yeah, we also did with a little older, like 13 to 15, and then we've done just board games. That's very good as well to use with children because it's 
so much easier to get going and you don't have to think about like the technology and and the digital stuff so then you can just get a lot of uh, uh, stuff maples and uh, board cards and they just go crazy and it's so much fun and that's actually i'm really happy that you brought that up so like a bunch of times in the introductions i mentioned what i do i did in this time so one of my jobs is like i teach game design at, at, at a uni in finland and one of the lessons I do is that I put them to play board games because a lot of a surprising amount of students who want to make video games have not played board games, apart from like Monopoly and all that. Like, let's not even go there. Uh, but 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 getting them to try physical games and how quickly it is to iterate in those is in, like it, it you can't compare it to any video game stuff. So like that's an incredibly good idea. So yeah, I think a board game kind of board uh, board jam board game jam board. Yeah, jam board, whatever. Uh, that's a that's a great idea because there is something about the uh, tactile feeling that makes you remember things as well. And uh, we all like getting glue and glitter on our hands, so it's like it's super simple to get in. And as I say, it's easy to balance, test out, and and redefine the whole game. You can just cut all the corners. It's a new game. Uh, if you do it in Unity or you know some sort of a framework kind of. Game yeah, engine. Uh, there's a higher risk of changing things as you uh, as you go along. I think it's really smart starting with a super practical physical thing and then moving on. So everybody knows the rules. They know how to balance things. They know how to do loops and cores and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. yeah, that's a good, really good shout out. Nicely, nice, nice, nice. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, but I think we are he heading towards the end of our uh, show today. Uh, Oh, yeah. I was, I was, I think Danny had anything about the jams for oh. the question. Oh. So in terms of uh, making uh, jams for kids, I actually don't have any pro tips. I know in Denmark there's uh, uh, coding pirates and they're doing some fantastic work for children. Uh, but quickly to mention, Nordic game jams open to any, anyone. Like kids are welcome, and we just throw them in the deep with you know the big workshops and the newbie workshops, and they get to pair with the veterans from the industry, and maybe it works. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, should we finish off with one last question? Yes. It's going to be your little pitch, but uh, you're all going to have one last uh, small pitch. Why should people join your next game jam? Do, 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 do. And when is it? And when um, is it, yes. <laughs> Bobby, do you want to start? Yeah, join our game jam if you want to get started and just focus on... Uh, having fun and making a game for the first time, maybe with the friends, uh, then you should come to our game jam. And uh, uh, Moxie Jam is in March, uh, the beginning of March at uh, Game Habitat's Dev Hub. Uh, Vision of Liam is usually in November and online. So you're welcome if you fit <laughs> like the target group. Uh, if possible, I don't know if Viv can get these, like some, any, any web, websites or anything and put them in the chat and if not we'll also put on the youtube uh, description uh, ask you guys later for the actual addresses but yeah cool uh, danny yep uh, i would say join the nordic game jam because as i learned recently it is one of the most significant game uh game dev community events in denmark um uh, people People have been fans for a very long time. People come and get to meet um, all sorts of people, all the benefits from the jams that we already discussed. And uh, we are back at Old Boy University which, in Copenhagen, which is a fantastic venue. Mm. And that's in April, right? It is 13th to 16th of April. Tickets are already on sale. Um, we broke some stuff without a ticket uh, version. So uh, it's... We're bringing down some of the prices, so it's even easier to to come join us, especially if you're a student. Um, I think that's the sales pitch plug that I'm going to use my time. Uh, that was a pretty good plug. Passing forward. Nice. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to throw Damo next. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to just uh, kind of pitch the uh, Finnish game jam slash global game jam. So uh, definitely go look around if you have a, a site nearby you uh it's going to be great experience to connect with uh, both the local community around you and also uh, the community around finland and it's just going to be amazing and remember to send your gameplay video to be eligible for the finnish game jam awards as well so 
And that's going to be in, in two weeks, I think. So first yeah, weekend week. of... Yeah. yeah. Next week's weekend. If I can plug, our office is a jam site. So if mm -hmm. you search FGJ Play Play, uh, you will find our Eventbrite and our global game jam site. And, and more than you that, guys have Solnus as well, right? Sorry? You guys have Solnus as well, right? Yeah, uh, actually, we don't. We, we oh, are no. the oh, what is Don't this? worry. Talk with them and we'll sort out the sauna. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can be at my office and I will go to Timo and have sauna. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I don't know. Yes. Then I'll make a sauna. A guided tour. Yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's still 10 places or something. So, you know, let's go. Anyway, yeah, Norway. Yes, I mean, I'll join any game jam. I think you'll have a great time anyway. But uh, the one that I'm hosting is in Oslo. It's um, from the 3rd to 5th uh, February. So we basically start on a Friday and we end on a Sunday. And we have opened the whole school up for 24 hours. We encourage everyone to get proper sleep and not to kind of stay all night. But I mean, uh, it's also fun <laughs> to do that. But um, yeah, I think I think the one thing that kind of makes it a bit more interesting to come to us is that we we're, we're a bunch of different schools around in Oslo that are are collaborating on on this event as well. So we have people from uh, technical schools and more university type schools, college schools, that kind of thing. Um, and I think that kind of already there, you have half the crowd is students, and then the rest are maybe industry people. Or hobbyists, or people who have no, no, um, you know, b you know, background in game design, and I think that's the kind of magic spice of it all. That's where the jam happens. That so you get people off the street that kind of comes in and comes in with these crazy ideas, or just thinks flips the whole uh, idea on its head. And if that's not enough, I think we're the only game jam site in the world who also offers waffles to all our jammers. <laughs> yeah, so we actually have jam at our jam. You know. Yeah. Up there. That's a yeah. strong selling point, I will say. Yeah. <laughs> and it's oh, such God. a nice. Uh, I think one of the one of the topics or or kind of um, themes for the global game day a couple of years ago was uh, what does home mean to you? And then everybody started like, hmm. And that's when someone just fired up the waffle iron, and everybody's like, yeah, well, that's home. It's like I'm I'm completely home, and everybody <laughs> was just almost like this collective. Uh, Solving almost like it. I was like, I just want to go home, you know. I miss home. Maybe I should call my mom. You know, it's such a nice kind of like everybody's hugged them. Yeah, it just helped the whole thing. So it's like, yeah, we're definitely doing waffles. That's I mean, that's the one thing that we kind of do that can really separate us. And if you can have any jam that separates yourself from other jams or or events or places or like like Bobby mentioned, uh, you know, those kind of jam sites where you can meet people at a safe space. Talk about something that's really important to you. Uh, maybe get a waffle, something like that. Just something that that breaks up the the day to day routine. I mean, that's something that's gold. I mean, that's that's what we live for. So, yeah. I I like that. I might steal the waffle idea. You know, waffles worth a cry. It's uh, trademarked, uh, unfortunately. So. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Norway. Fair enough. Fair enough. You could do. Uh, I think pancakes haven't been done, so you could do that. Sure, sure. That's true. That's true. I will share uh, the recipe for waffles. Come on, guys. <laughs> is it made with Norwegian oil or something? I don't know. Uh, oh. It's whale oil, and uh, I won't mention the rest, but it's like a lot of moose in there. So, yeah. And, and, and money, like just coins. We just drop them in there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we have a blender that's uh, the industry blender that kind of uh, gets like fine grained coins. Mm. So nice. I will never eat waffles when I go to Norway. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last <laughs> waffle you'll ever taste. I promise you that. <laughs> and Both Sam, good that. Yeah, I'm sad we're crying now when you mentioned waffles. It all mm. makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but hey, uh, so yeah, like like Sylvia said, we're we're kind of running it out of time. This is really cool to have you all here talking about game jumps. I I personally I really enjoy game jumps. I've been to a bunch, and and like I said, we're going to be hosting. I'll be hosting. Uh, one of these sites, and uh, and and it sounds like you people are all you wonderful people are hosting mm -hmm. these things, and and please keep doing it. It is a it's an, an incredibly wonderful source for people to learn, but also to have an idea of like what may, making games is like, and maybe even an entry like 
kind of an entry into the industry. At least, I mean, it can't it, it can't hurt if nothing else. Progre? Yeah, no way. I'm a good boy, and so I'm raising my hand. But I just want to mention uh, during your game jam now, there is um, Norway has six uh, jam sites all around Norway. So if you're not in Oslo, again, you can go anywhere. Uh, Sweden has twelve, which is impressive. Very good. Uh, Denmark has one. That's from the global one. But I think you have so many other jams, and you have so many other communities doing this stuff. So uh, I just want to mention, like, if if you don't find a jam that's suited for you, just Try another one. And the one that I wanted to kind of mention quickly is that if you go to indie game jams uh, with an S.com, you get all the jams that are existing and happening mm -hmm. right now. And I think uh, it's everything from Game Boy Jam, uh, where you can only have four colors, you know, at the same time, um, to, uh, no, you know, Ludo narrative jams. I mean, there's there's something for everyone. So just just try to explore and try to really just just dip your toe into it. It's uh, super friendly. It'll be the best time you ever have. Yes, I, I guess the main takeaway is like if if you have a chance, do, just go to jam. Yeah, go to jam. Doesn't matter where it is, uh, but like just just go. Just like and 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 challenge yourself a little bit. You don't have to go like super far out of your comfort zone. Just. But just go. Just you, you never know what ends up. If you want to have a really cool time, come to Finland in the summer for a jam jam. It's some, it, I can tell you it's some good shit, honestly. Uh, and I feel like I need to mention this uh, uh, at the end. So Kim, uh, who couldn't be here, reason is because he's doing one of the jam side uh, streams right now. Uh, and that's, that's why he couldn't be here. Because apparently that's more important than us. Fine. Uh, the nerve. We'll be going to be dropping the link, I think, in the chat. In, in chat. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you want to go and grab, uh, ha have a look at that. But other than that, I think we're we're pretty good here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for a lovely, lovely guests. Thank you, Sylvia, for being ever the wonderful co-host. Thank you, Viv, again, who I didn't mention in the beginning, for being a wonderful producer, putting mm -hmm. all all this stuff, uh, running the whole show. Uh, and and thank you to all you darlings watching out there. It's it's been a pleasure once again. Uh, but now scram, go jam, go go get into a jam. Okay, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> out out. Uh, unless you're watching this on YouTube after the jams, but like you know, even then, in the future, go jam. Uh, any last words? Uh, you wanna you know words of wisdom? You wanna part uh, with? We already did words of wisdom. We're running out of time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you like Good time to what? see. Thank you. Always Th thank you so thank much you for joining us today. It's been fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. And now the awkward moment of.